Flow Riders, and welcome to this edition of The Flow. Yes, gang. Yes, gang. Today, we're going to do a very special episode uh, because Katie ditched me. That's why <laughs> we're doing a special episode because one of the most common questions you get whenever you produce a show or a podcast or something like that, there'll be people who want to get started and they often have gear and tech oriented questions. So we thought since it's the season, we thought it would be fantastic time to come in and talk to you about some of the gear and some of the tech that we use in order to produce a podcast or things that you should be on the lookout if you're already doing a show or thinking about starting up a show for the new year. So we're going to dive in today. We're going to talk about some stuff. If you have questions and you're listening to this on the audio version, by all means, you can send those questions in to us at flow at ecamm.com. Also, we do have the volley and you can catch that link down here in the description. You can go over to the volley and ask your questions on the volley and that we can just answer you right away. Volley is definitely one of the greatest things for podcasters. It's, it's a, just a fantastic way because you can just pick up your phone and almost like a walkie talkie, throw your question in. You can do it with video. You can do it with text. You can do it with just audio. And then someone can get back to you and answer you you know, relatively simply. So it's kind of an amazing piece of tech. We absolutely love it. So I'm going to start, go ahead and say, get volley. That's gonna be the first thing on my list today. <laughs> but uh, before we dive in, I just want to remind you that if you are enjoying this podcast and you maybe know someone else who needs to hear this, please share it, but also please step over to the iTunes store and leave us a review. Something about podcasting iTunes is where you want to leave review. We would really appreciate that. And yeah, let's dive in. So before we talk about gear, I think the most important thing that a lot of creators in general, not just podcasters, creators in general get wrong is they immediately go to the gear stuff. And rather than going to the gear stuff, I think it's important to get the head straight, right? Let's talk about getting the head straight before you go. So let me show you one of my first tips that I think everybody who is getting into podcasting or creating of any nature, something that you should get involved to. And that's going to be Skillshare. Boom. Skillshare is one of the best things you could ever do for yourself, no matter what portion of the business you're in. They have classes on myriad subjects, everything from graphic design to how to use your audio programs like Adobe Audition or GarageBand or Logic, all of the above. You can learn some things about sort of creative thinking. There's so much stuff here for you to learn. I think Skillshare is one of the most important things that any creator should put into their arsenal. I also want to take you on to one of the next things in my arsenal that I absolutely love. And I think this is the shortcut for getting your head game up to speed. And this is an application known as Blinkist. Blinkist is kind of like a audible.com, but they serve things to you in blinks. So what does that mean? That means you can get the Cliff Notes version. You guys remember Cliff Notes? You can come in and get that serious Cliff Note version about the books that everyone's talking about, books that you should probably go back into. The other day we were talking about E-Myth, so let me see if that's available on here. And uh, go back and check out E-Myth or E-Myth Revisited is actually in here. So you can go in and get like a 15 minute blink, or this one's 26 because it's a you know really important book, but it's all about entrepreneurship. And this is a, honestly a book that everybody who's in the creator space should definitely be reading if you do any type of digital product sales or coaching or you you know you sell uh, custom crocheted hydro flask covers uh, you should probably read the e-myth revisit it it's a fantastic book this is one of those books that i read once a year now instead of having to go back and pick up the whole book again i could just run through this quick 26 minute blink and it will remind me of all of the things that are in the book. Again, this is a book that I've read well over 10 times. Uh, it was initially part of my curriculum when I was in B school. This is a fantastic book. There's tons of these out there. Blink is quite amazing. Now, if you want to check out Blink, again, I'll have a link in the description down there at the bottom of the page. But uh, it's super simple. It's uh, docrock.live slash Blink. You know, it's a super easy one. Um, to get into. But I think that some of these sort of head oriented applications are super important to get your dome right, put you in the right mind space, help you learn some stuff. And I guess the last one I'll give you, which 
I have literally been using for, I think, close to 25 years, way back when it was lynda.com, and now it's LinkedIn Learning. LinkedIn Learning is freaking fantastic. As a matter of fact, you'll come in here and you'll see some people that we know. And yep, look, right there on the top, look who's in here teaching up the good good inside LinkedIn Learning, none other than our very own Stephanie Liu, right? So LinkedIn Learning, you could come in and find all type of stuff. And so here she has build an engaging online following for creators, right? There you go. I mean, there's something that people always ask, hey, I'm doing my podcast, right? How do I get my podcast game together? And how do I grow my audience? Well, if you're on LinkedIn Learning, you can just learn from Stephanie. And you know Stephanie knows what's up. Like, Stephanie is, you know, absolutely amazing. So these are some of my first picks. I think that everyone who's getting into this should look into getting some of that headspace together. And that is going over to again, learn things on applications like Skillshare or Blinkist, audible.com of course is in that list and then LinkedIn learning. Now let's just say you're on a budget and, and you know, Black Friday's not gonna be your friend. You can't do any of this stuff. Pretty much all of these are the same thing as what's known as the public library. <laughs> do not sleep on the public library. You can go and, and dust off your, <coughs> dust off your library card I mean, I went to the library last week. I have always used that library because when I was a little kid, that was part of the babysitting game, right? Mom, after school, hey, go to the library and don't hang out with them kids in the street. So I used to just go to the library. So to me, walking into the library brings back a nostalgic nature. It brings uh, a certain feeling. And I just love the the smell of the library. Like it's, it's something I spend a lot of time in as a child, right? So maybe that's just me. Maybe you don't live near your public library. Most of them have facilities to where you can download books and eBooks and audio books directly to your mobile devices, iPhone, Android, iPad, Galaxy tablet, Kindle, whatever, from your library. So your state library probably has. The other one that everyone often forgets, I don't know about what you went to school, but I can roll into the Hamilton Library at the University of Hawaii as an alumni and I can use the library. That that library is massive, right? We are allowed to use our alumni library. So if you graduate with a higher education, you can probably go back to your college and use the library, right? Now, if you don't want to, you know, get clowned by young kids, then just go later at night because they don't go then. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. It really depends on where you live and what type of school you went to. But yeah, most of you as alumni, you're able to use the library at your college. So there are resources out there that I think are going to be far more important than a new microphone or whatever that will help you with your podcast. I often get questions of how do you just able to bring off recall facts or talk about a subject matter without any warm up or whatever. Uh, because I read people like that's why if you only have 15 minutes a day, even if it's only 10, everybody has at least 10 minutes to fluff their reading game. And it's like, nah, doc, I don't have that kind of time. Yeah, you do either that or you're extremely constipated. Like, so there's definitely somewhere in your time right before bed, right when you wake up, while you're drinking coffee, while you were, you know, discussing ancient Mesopotamian basket weaving in the Oval Office of your house, AKA dropping the kids off the pool, you have an opportunity to at least squeeze in like 10 minutes of reading in a day. I say get it to like 15 to a half an hour. It really will help you and make your life a lot better. Okay, so now that we've covered that, let's dive in and I want to tell you that majority of these things that we're going to be looking at today, you will find them over on my kit page. And so my kit page is over here at kit.co slash doc rock. And you'll see there's a list that I set up for you guys. And that list is called creator gifts for 2023. There's also some stuff over here on my Ecamm live kit. I have things in your, you know, light up your show. But yeah, if you have any questions specifically about gear, you can always reach me, doc at ecamm.com. And I'm more than happy to answer those questions. 
but I did build a little list here for people who would be interested into maybe getting a new microphone, like looking at some of my two favorite interfaces right now. Uh, you guys know I've been absolutely over the moon about the Shure MV88 Plus video kit. It's really, really good. This allows you to do those short form videos, uh, even long form videos, honestly, but this allows you to create rapidly. And that is the goal here, family. I'm trying to teach you how to create rapidly so that you can get out those five and a half pieces of content every day in 2023, right? Uh, just be on the lookout. Create 2023 is coming. Five and a half pieces of content on your favorite platform or spread across your platforms. Actually, you need like five pieces on every platform, to be honest, but let's make it easy. That If you do uh, 2023 divided by 365, it comes out to 5.6. And well, a 0.6 piece of content is just reposting a quote. <laughs> From somewhere or a sale on something that counts. So I have a you know a couple of my favorite cameras, so forth, so on, etc. All of this stuff is right here on the list. I will talk about a couple particulars and then we'll dive in and start looking for some of your questions and see what you have. Like we're in the podcasting space right here, right? We're talking about microphones. These are not in any order, but I will give it to you in order of sort of a roundabout figures. The short SM58 is an XLR microphone, and it has been the go-to microphone for years. I mean, absolute years. You've probably held one of these or used one in high school, church, some conference you spoke at, whatever. This is a fantastic mic. Yes, it's not the prettiest on camera, but it is a fantastic mic for anyone to get started in the game. If you're looking for a XLR, I'm sorry, a USB version of the same, look no further than the Samsung Q2U, which I didn't put on the list, but I will make myself a mental note to remember to put on this list so that you can find it when you need it. And it's basically the same build quality, everything, but it's going to be in a USB compatible format. Now we're speaking of USB compatible microphones. My all time favorite USB microphone in the game right now, today, as we sit here a couple of weeks before 2023rd, is the Shure MV7 USB microphone. When you listen to Katie over here on the flow, this is what Katie is speaking to. When we have on our uh, illustrious guests like Alec Johnson or, or Keely Dunn, uh, yeah, she's speaking into that MV7 USB. The last episode Michelle was on, she's on the same thing when we're doing a creator pod. This is a fantastic mic. It's one of the go-to mics in the Ecamm fam. It's just a great pickup. And of course there's the ultimate SM58. It's, it's the industry standard. Like when it comes to this podcasting thing, you got this SM58 and you got the Heil PR40, which I have on the floor right here. Um, both of these are just, they're, they're just what it is. Like if you listen to any good podcast, that's what's out there. That's what you're listening to. That one requires a little bit more back pocket, but um, you know, hey, it works. That's the reason why everybody uses it, right? Plus you get to be like, you'll never find, it, it makes you sound like, you know, Lou Rawls. <laughs> <laughs> so there's that. Now, you guys know when it comes to connecting it to things, I'm all about the Roadcaster Pro, but I know that can be a lot for someone. But hey, it's Christmas. Sometimes you dive in. You just, you know, look across the room at the person who's supposed to buy you a gift and be like, I'll put up with you all year and for the last two and a half years in the Panini. So I deserve this Roadcaster Pro too. And then let them know what's popping. Right. So another uh, good one that's relatively new, but also not very expensive is the Focusrite Vocaster. It's designed for podcasting. It brings in some of the stuff that you know and love about the Rodecaster Pro, but it just put it into a smaller type package. So I, I had a chance to play with this at Podcast Movement, but it's a very, very cool interface. It's not too expensive. They do have a version with dual mics if that's what you need, but it brings some of that Rodecaster Pro flair into a smaller device that's not very expensive at all. So that, my friends, is a good look into that. All right, let me dive in real quick and get to some of these questions. We got some good ones in here. So Victoria says, what is a good starter monitor compatible with the MacBook Pro, please? Well, first of all, not all, but anything made within the last, say, four or five years, 
100% compatible with the Mac. Monitors aren't really machine specific. But what I look for is I look for good quality in a monitor. And to me, this is my personal feelings. I don't hear any fights in the comments. Just go to your store and look for an LG that's the size and resolution that you want. Done. In the story, game over. You don't even have to think about it. Until they made the cinema displays like two years ago when they brought those back out. If you went to the Apple store and you were to pick up a monitor at the Apple store, they were going to feed you an LG. Um, we used, we, I haven't worked at the company for well over 10 years. I still say we, <laughs> we used LG panels in a lot of our, you know, displays. Uh, we use LG panels in a lot of the laptops. They're just fantastic. Uh, I just happen to like the coloration and the above. The equivalent would be Samsung. Samsung monitors are also fantastic. Samsung just makes ugly cases. <laughs> the shell on Samsung monitors is often weird and round and has like odd looking feet in the above. So they're both the best two monitors in the game is the Samsung's and the LG's. But Samsung is like that person that makes cupcakes that taste really good and put a bunch of crap frosting on the top. Um, but yeah, I would say go to your, your favorite getting spot. <laughs> this is go over to your favorite electronic store and then get one of those. If you can, if you are feeling extra happy with yourself, look at the ultra fine range. These are the best in the game. I have an ultra fine on one side and I have the one level down from the ultra fine on the other side that I use as my bigger monitor, mainly because it's just to do demos for Ecamm. But I have two LGs that I stare at all day, every day. Eyes never get tired. Colors are beautiful, things like that. But anytime you see the ultra fine range, those are their better monitors. This 27 is a little small for my taste. Mine is an ultra fine 32. It's freaking massive, but it's very good. And it's actually cheaper. So this is the uh, the 32 inch ultra fine that I have right now I'm staring at. And again, it's just a fantastic monitor. So that was that. Then the other thing Vicky says is, should I get the Elgato Footsie switch? <laughs> I love this. Um, the Elgato foot pedal is pretty incredible. I have one. I currently don't use it because I just keep kicking it, but they are good. I know that my friend Keely uses it to mute and unmute while she's doing things. But um, there's a myriad of them out there. Because you're a musician, you might look at something like the air turn pedals. Instead, what the air turn pedals will do for you is they will allow you to change music on the fly. And I think they're sort of better for this. You can program air turn pedals to just be a keyboard shortcut. And as a keyboard shortcut, you can set them up to do some of the same things like change scenes because to change a scene in Ecamm is command arrow left or right. And then, so yeah, you might, you might find that air turn works better because when you're doing gigs, at least they can change pages in the sheet music for you. Although most of you really incredible pianists, I don't know how you keep the fingers moving while you change the page. That's incredible to me. If you're doing something really fantastic, they have a person in a suit to change the page for you. <laughs> so there's that. All right, let's go down. Vicky, happy holidays. Thank you for those great questions. I really, really appreciate that. Miles, my man Miles says, okay, Miles wants to know if he should replace, in a nutshell, the Shure SM7B with the focus right for something like the Elgato Wave XLR. Negative. Absolutely not. No way, shape, or how. Eh -eh. Nothing is better than this. Well, there's a lot better, but you don't want to spend that kind of money. <laughs> for podcasting, this is, to me is the best. If you need a cloud lifter on your SM7B, if you were going to do anything as an upgrade, it would be to get like the Rodecaster Pro 2 because that eliminates the cloud lifter. And in a way, every time you get rid of a component, it simplifies things and makes things better. So if I were going to do anything to change something in that list, it would be to get rid of the Scarlet and replace it with something like the Rodecaster Pro, especially as a presenter or a podcaster, because you get more of your audio studio right before you have to go and edit it later. That would be it. Or some other type of interface that would allow you to do things like add the compression and the noise gate and things like that, which I know the focus right does, but sometimes the, well, my older focus, right? It didn't 
do it in the box itself. The DSPs were off board, so you ran it through something else. So yeah, if I was gonna change anything, it'd be go to Roadcaster Pro or to like an Apollo, something of that nature. And so uh, the microphone you got, but it wants to streamline the rest of the space. The Roadcaster Pro would be, yeah, the new Roadcaster Pro 2 is tiny too, by comparison to the older one. And it, it will help you take out the, the cloud lifter as part of the gear. And yes, it's a little bit bigger than the Solo, but it will bring other things to the table. The Wave XLR is a fantastic mic. As a matter of fact, it's a Lewitt. I think it's a Lewitt 240, but it relies so heavy on the software and I enjoy the way the software is working nowadays for these microphones, but it's another piece of software. So there's that. There's a, it's kind of a catch-22. Uh, fantastic question, Miles. And welcome back to the show. Todd, Mr. Christmas Clatter Todd says, what microphone arms do you like? Todd, I'm going to show you this, and it's going to make you cry. I'm going to highly suggest you don't go out and copy the me and buy one. But this is what I have on my list, and I have to say that because they don't come cheap. In the normal human space, it would probably be the Elgato arms. I like both of them, but my Dream Team microphone arm, and I'm going to put one underneath my own Christmas tree at some point in time. And you've seen these on TV shows. You've seen these if you've been into your local radio station. And it's a brand called the Yellow Tech Mika. I think they are the most incredible arms in the business, and they're extremely beautiful. Like, that's the thing about it is they're beautiful, and they look great on camera. So you see these nice arms here. We, I mean, they're just incredible. They even have tally lights on them. So that means that when the microphone is active, you would be able to tell that it's active because a little light comes on. But these are super strong. They're quiet. They don't make any noise. I guess the only knock about these is many of them have internal cabling. And that, you know, can be a pain in the butt when you repair. But these are really, really incredible i strongly suggest if you could swing it this is what i would get if you can't swing it stick to something normal <laughs> like the elgato arms because they are quite strong and they don't make any noise it's currently what i'm using right now and so i can move the mic around and up and down it doesn't really make any noise those old ones when you eat okay let's put it this way if you can see the spring on the side skip it because it's going to bang around and make noise <laughs> whenever you touch the mic also, depending on the microphone you have, you will have handling noise. Like I touch mine, it doesn't make any sound. Some of them, just grabbing the handle of the mic arm, you can hear it through your mic. That's a combination of your mic's noise rejection. SM7B doesn't make noise. And a combination of the mic stand just being noisy and squeaky. And that's no fun at all. Nobody likes that. <laughs> so if possible, I would say look at the Elgato arms and uh, Rich has a very good comment about the Yellow Tech Mika is they're oddly not yellow. <laughs> this is true. They are not yellow. I'm sure they could be powder coated, but they are really, really incredible. If you watch like um, some sports talk radio show or some of the new shows where they're doing a live radio show, uh, you'll see things like that. It's, it's quite incredible. Okay, now let's go. Let's go anything else what places do you recommend to get sound effects for your podcast okay that is a good question from caleb caleb i had that on my list <laughs> so let me go back to my list real quick and tell you the ones that i was thinking of i personally will always tell you to go to epidemic sounds and again you can reach that docrock.live slash beats epidemic sound to me is one of the best only because they simplify the licensing process, right? You don't have to go and add a license to everything or certify every video. All you need to do is tell them at one time what your channels are. So there's a place in Epidemic on your profile to connect your YouTube, Instagram, LinkedIn, whatever the places you want to go, Facebook, all of the above, and it will go ahead and give you access to those things. If the content providers were ever going to tag a song as not yours, it 
it just knows. And so it self fixes itself. I've never had to go in and manually tell them that I have an epidemic license and the epidemic license is mine. And so it works. I have done that for things that I've pulled from Envato, which is good. Envato elements or audio jungle are good other than the irritating audio jungle, <laughs> audio jungle. I people, no one is going to work that hard to steal your sound that you need to imprint the sound of your logo in the sample. It's really hard for me to listen to a sample to decide if I want to use it. If every five seconds, audio jungle, and you're just talking and I'm trying to hear if it's audio jungle. If this is a good sound and I'm like, audio jungle, want to use that sound. It's kind of hard to audio jungle, get an idea, audio jungle, if I want to use that. Envato, stop that crap. No one's going to steal your stuff so much. Yeah, let's get it. Let's face it. I work with creators all day, every day, Envato. Sorry, podcast people. I got to talk to them real quick because they get on my dang nerves. <laughs> I work with creators. They don't know how to steal it, okay? Trust me. Most people don't know how to steal it, and your prices are low enough. It's not worth stealing. So just take that stupid imprint out of the file and let me listen, okay? Okay. Anyway, so the other places like <laughs> like uh, if, uh, Epidemic Sounds doesn't do that. Upbeat doesn't do that. Thematic doesn't. Do, the only place I could think of right now that still imprints their sound files with that irritating audio jungle is Envato. So Envato, stop it. No one's stealing your stuff, bro. Okay? No one's stealing your stuff. I'm coming to Australia and have a conversation with you face to face because that's just irritating. So. They would be on my list if it wasn't for that. So I like story blocks. It's fantastic. Epidemic sounds is fantastic. Upbeat, which is the one of the cheapest ones out there. That's U P P B E A T. Upbeat is also super, super fantastic. All of the above will let you hear music and sound effects without all of that stupid noise. And yeah, you know, honestly, Todd, uh, I could probably Nowadays, with sound removal technology, I, you probably could uh, acquire that sound and make the audio jungle part disappear and no one would even notice. So it's just a waste of energy and I wish they would stop that. It's so obnoxious. It's so obnoxious. So yes, Caleb, let's start with epidemic sounds and then maybe look into upbeat or story blocks. Story blocks is also super cool because that gives you B-roll video for your video things that you do. Another one, which a lot of people forget about, if you just need a little bitty piece for the very beginning of your situation, there is Canva. You can actually use some of the stuff that's in Canva. So what you would do is just download the audio as part of a video and then just lay it into your audio editor and then that would work as well. The next question, that's such a good question, Caleb. Uh, Victoria says, could you or would you recommend Elgato arms for cameras as well as mics. Uh, if it'll hold this three pound Shure SM7B, it will hold majority of the cameras on the market. One of the reasons why I like this Elgato arm is not a lot of arms can handle the heft of this homegirl right here. Cause she is a beast, right? This SM7B weighs literally three pounds. I think it's 3.3 .3 to be exact. So the fact that it can handle this, it will hold most cameras. Now, when you start getting heavy lenses and things on, that might be a challenge, but you can tighten the joints on here. So once you get it in place, you might be able to crank tighten the joint down really, really well and sort of lock that in place. Now, I will say, um, I just saw a comment and I want to remind you, yes, they do have sounds inside uh, the Stream Deck. You can go to the Stream Deck store and get sounds from there. Really strong opinion coming. Please don't have you feeling hurt. The sound effects that are in the Stream Deck store are hot garbage. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> They're just trash. I don't like them. They they just sound campy. Campy, that's a word. Yeah, they sound campy to me. Yeah, I just, I've heard them before. I think they sound horrible. I prefer... Uh, things that are being produced by creators that produce. That's one of the cool things about Epidemic Sounds is they're all created by producers, right? Anyway, Strong Fathers, I'm going to answer your question. Uh, where do you get an orange cover for my Shore MV7? It's reportedstore.com. This is on my SM7B and... Dun, 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 same cover. <laughs> so this is my MV7. Bop. 
bop, bop, bop. It's a 55 millimeter bore. So people listening on the audio, what I did was I went and picked up an MV7 and showed that it's the exact same cover. It makes your MV7 look like an SM7B at this point. They're almost twins. If no one's paying attention, no one will know. So many people have done that. As a matter of fact, if you watch this show every week and you watch Katie, you see that Katie has an orange cover on her MV7 and that's because I sent it to her. So yes, it's just that same exact one. It's from the reporter store dot com the reporter store dot com one of these days they will um give us some love because i've probably sold myself and tom buck we've probably sold a couple hundred of these mic covers for them <laughs> very cool okay guys um we covered a lot about mics and things like that and i also wanted just to to remind you of a couple of tools that i think are important for this process too i think uh, things like Canva should definitely be on your list. If you don't already have it, Canva Pro is super important. I also think another thing to look at is your Adobe Express. Adobe Express is quite amazing now. They're working really, really hard on making it delicious. So it is definitely fantastic. I think you should look into some sort of scheduler for your social media post if you are trying to bring attention to your show and you want to do it let's say a nice way uh <laughs> this is something i've been teaching people a lot you have to invite people to your show without selling it too hard right you want you, you want to just let them know that here's a little teaser and then they'll find it especially if you're doing any education or teaching or training and stuff like that you, you're basically saying, hey, my stuff is good, come and check it out, but you don't wanna sound like that, right? So you might even get into looking at some courses on how to market a podcast, right? Look at some courses on how to be a better presenter. Look at things like signing up for an improv class. Look at things that signing up for Toastmasters, things like that. Those will do you just as well as a bunch of these tools, right? And I know everybody feels that the gear side is so important that they wanna go get a new mic or a new mixer or some new lights or a new camera, but all of that stuff is no good if you turn it all on and you're like, hi, I'm here today to talk to you about my podcast. On my podcast today, we are gonna be talking about how to get more clients to your business. Like, if that's your podcast, hey, you could have an Ikigami camera operated by Scorsese himself and a script written by Aaron Sorkin, and it's not going to work. <laughs> okay, it's just not going to work. So maybe if you find that you just don't have that natural flow yet, whatever, maybe one of the things you should be looking into is how to go get some presentation skills, how to write better, things like that, you know, pick up a couple of books or writing. Those are some of the gear parts that I think many, many people miss. Many, many people forget Toastmasters. Many, many people forget improv classes, things like that. And it's fantastic. When we were in Boston, uh, Ken and Glenn, took us to go see an improv show in downtown Boston. And Luis and I had a blast. It was so good. My best friends actually run an improv studio about two walls behind this wall. And they're fantastic. I watch their live streams all the time because they don't know that Ecamm NDI is on so I can watch the show for free from my computer. <laughs> but it's, uh, very, it's very incredible and... I think those are some of the things that anybody who is looking into podcasting or becoming a better speaker, possibly getting speaking gigs and things like that. Those are some of the tools that you should be looking for besides these mics and mic arms and monitors and, you know, things of that nature. Right. It's like if you you, you play piano really, really well and maybe you should talk to a vocal coach so you can get your singing on. Right. And I'm, I'm sure Vicky can do both, but you know, some people, they got the piano part down, but they haven't figured out the singing part. And I had a vocal person tell me once before, pretty much everybody can sing. And I was like, what? Nah, man, you ain't heard my sister. 
<laughs> and she said, yeah, everybody can sing. It just has to, you just have to find that right spot for them. So make sure you put some of the tools on your list that are important. Again, Canva, Adobe Express, some sort of scheduler that you use for your social media so you can make sure you're getting these posts out there. Supportive apps like Story Blocks or Envato Elements and things like that. I think all of the above are super, super handy dandy to your brain. Also, don't forget to treat yourself to professional versions of things like CapCut or um, InShot, you know, so that you can produce more of these short form content. Those things are going to be big to yourself. Yeah. So I think that's it. I'm going to check in real quick if I have any more last minute questions. And I really enjoyed coming in and, and talking to you guys. But remember, you could ask these questions on Volley or you can send them to us through an email. I do see one from David. It says, Victoria asked about a recommendation for overhead camera. Can you recommend an overhead one for piano shot? Uh, yeah, iPhone, <laughs> Android. No, actually, my favorite overhead camera right now is the Insta360 Link. I have one here in the bag, actually. <laughs> I don't have it connected because I just packed it to take it with me somewhere this weekend. But uh, I love this thing. It travels easily. For people who are watching at home, let's say it's the size of a relatively large piece of tofu. Let's put it that way, because I can't think of anything else. You know those little oranges that they you buy from Costco for the kids? I think they're called cuties. Yeah, it's about that big. It's about the size of a little teeny orange cutie, and it clips right on top of your laptop. It has things like amazing 4K picture and the image can follow you all over the place. And that's the Insta360 link. I will make sure I add it to the kit because David asked. Um, what's really great about it is it's so light that it's easy to rig up. So if you have to take it with you on the road and rig it, it's something that you'll be able to clip to the Mac or a music stand because it doesn't weigh much. And so that to me, that kind of gives it a little extra je ne sais quoi, is that it doesn't weigh too much and therefore it might go a long, long way. The Insta360 is exactly on point. Insta360 Link is the guy. Also, my overhead camera right now is an actual Insta360, uh, regular. <laughs> and this is the Insta360 ONE RS. So anything like this, GoPros, all of the above work. The advantage of the Link is it's an actual webcam, and so you can use it for a myriad other things. The advantage to this style is when you're not using it in your setup, you can take it with you on the road and get some action shots of you playing piano while skiing. There's that. Okay, gang, we're going to wrap this up. Thank you guys so much for listening to this edition of the podcast. This is normally from the live show where we go into the Q&A. Hey, we did an entire show of Q&A today. So this is going to be interesting for Luis to cut out any weird stuff that I might have said. Don't cut it out. Just leave it in there, Luis. Make your job easy. Edit lightly. It doesn't require too much. I'm happy to look like a fool for my people. It's all good in the hood. <laughs> so people want to remind you, this and all of the Flow episodes are sponsored by Speedify. Yes, Speedify. They come through. They, they just, man, it's just so incredible. That is a gift that you should either treat yourself or give somebody else this holiday season because A, it doesn't cost that much, but my goodness, it will help out a lot. Speedify is a good way to bump up your speed, allow you to connect a couple different connections together. It is a fantastic VPN. It is a stream saver for sure. It will keep your stream from cutting out. I can't say nothing but magic things about Speedify. They have been incredible, absolutely incredible, right? So go and check them out. Tell them Doc sent you. We'll be back next week, Tuesday, for another edition of The Flow. I appreciate you guys. You guys have fantastic questions. All of the links will be attached to this video, and you can check most of the stuff on my kit page at docrock.live slash kit. That is in the description below. I'll also add clips or links for the other stuff that we talked about later today, and we'll get you all set up. Thank you guys for being amazing, Flow Riders. You guys are the best. And don't forget, flow.ecamm.com. If this is your first time hearing this or seeing this and you want to see all the rest of the show, flow.ecamm.com. That's how you can find us. Drop over to the Apple Store and iTunes and leave us a review if you enjoyed this. You can always ask us questions. You can reach us on the volley or you can reach me at flow at ecamm.com and leave us a message and we'll get back to you. You guys are cool. Flow riders, enjoy yourself. Have a happy 
Happy Thanksgiving, and we will see y'all again next week right here on The Flow.